Throne of Bone is an early access auto battling deck building roguelike which sees us take charge of a necromancer making our way through an enemy filled castle by summoning undying minions. After discovering countless of synergies, spells, tactics and that the title would be perfect for a Game of Thrones porn parody, I can tell you if Throne of Bone get it, is a real fun or a refund. With a throne waiting for us in an enemy infested castle, we start off with one minion throwing themselves against an enemy in the at first very simple auto battling combat. Oh, my sweet summer child. Each combat encounter sees the combatants attack in a specific order from frontline to backline and left to right. When a minion attacks another, they hit each other simultaneously, resulting in most cases in a double death scenario like an unromantic version of Romeo and Juliet. Once we clear the enemy's board without having all health points drained from our necromancer, more on that in a minute, we get to spend the game's currency called Skulls to summon more minions to fill our board, creating powerful synergies between our underlings. These synergies form according to the relations between each other, as well as unique effects the over 50 different creatures have. A group filled with zombies, for example, can be far more effective than having a multicolored board of constantly dying minions. Mourning the demise of our beloved henchmen is in vain, since they will respawn after every fight, so don't worry when they throw themselves into more powerful enemies. What, are we some kind of suicide squad? If, however, our board gets cleared during a fight and the enemy still has units remaining, they will attack our necromancer directly, resulting in a life point being damaged as well as the enemy unit taking a fatal attack. Each minion has one specific ability they either trigger when attacking, after attacking, after they die, while they are dying, at the start of a combat, at the start of every turn, when the enemies attack. When the skills of these undead are not only vast in number but also incredibly clever design, allowing us to build team compositions with chain reactions more powerful than me eating a bunch of dairy products. Especially powerful will these combos become by further enhancing the specific minions by merging them together. Two of the same minion card can be merged, resulting in not only higher stats, but also passive buffs we can choose, as well as an increase of their special skills. Back to the lineups, these are perfected by the addition of special relics, buildings and banners we obtain, while the currently six different necromancers bring their own special effects on the board. The items we find can enhance our team, while the spells of our necromancer are the real showstoppers, which we unlock by leveling up our hero, getting to choose between three spells each level. This for example saw me building a team that grew in power with every death of an ally, while most allies were able to respawn or summon new minions to again power up the whole team, while simultaneously every death spread poison stacks to the enemies. These poison stacks are one of the currently two masteries every necromancer can develop, with magic mastery being the second. Poison deals damage to the enemy before his attack in the amount of the stack number, while magic deals flat out damage to our foes. Both of these masteries can be enhanced through minion skills, items or through the intermission we have after every successful floor of the castle we try to reclaim. Every area consists of four battles guided by an enemy general who charges into the fray themselves in the last fight. After the finished final battle we get to choose a row of multiple actions during our transition to the next floor. These actions can for example increase our poison or magic mastery, unlock a banner, enhance our minions or let us place a bet on a fight with the chance to gain more skulls when we correctly guess the winning team. Once we've taken care of every enemy on every floor we get to take on the end boss with his multiple phases and seeing him taken care of as well. We either finish the run successfully or take it one step further, challenging our last victorious team. Regardless of the outcome, a full run results in us not only gaining experience points for each necromancer, which unlocks more items to encounter, but further lets us unlock the next difficulty level for more runs. This slight increase to the replayability might not be enough to bring real long-term enjoyment out of Throne of Bone at the moment, with an emphasis on at the moment, since it is currently in early access, with still many things to implement like artwork and probably more game features. This slight negative at the moment gets overwhelmed by the clever combat design, the numerous combination options and an overall neat looking art style. Therefore, I would say that Throne of Bone is a real fun, yet I have to add that you might want to wait for a few more updates if you long for more content. Would you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to trim your nose hair.